and welcome back to the Haver mission, my ZSU Zoo. Uh, for those who are new, I very much appreciate you being here. For those who uh, are recurring visitors to my channel, uh, also welcome. <laughs> so, this video is going to cover some updates in my uh, zoo here, but also some things that happened in the meantime. So, uh, the day of recording this, we had our first... Uh, store day basically which means that all of us uh, went to discord at eight o'clock and tried to be the first one to post their request for a certain animal now i was very unfortunate and i didn't get my first choice uh, my first choice which was the pair uh, david steer so i went with my second choice uh, the kawadi i think it was the white face something kawadi or something i'm really bad at naming species by the way if you have noticed that yet <laughs> I know a lot about history and stuff like that but not a lot about animals and species and stuff like that <laughs> anyways um, I'm gonna go on a rant about the store a bit later in the video I just wanted to talk about some other stuff first but uh, you may have noticed that this is my little studio I used for ZSU news about that I love the fact that you all love that because it was so much fun uh, making it and if you are one of the other zoos that are in ZSU but you didn't see any references to your stuff in the video um, of course I wanted to keep it under five minutes so not everything that happened in a week will appear in there um, I generally pick like one habitat I really liked which was the Eurasian lynx uh, habitat um, from lion uh, I include one building that I really liked, uh, like my favorite building of the week, which was um, Leaf's Underwater uh, Observatory. And then I just include like my favorite stories of the week. Uh, I think that was like the, the meerkat thing and the, um, what else, the, the Dutch farmer and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the things I include. Um, next video, um, I already have some items that I want to include in there, but I'm going to include way more of those little, little like nods to events that occurred as like highlights or, or breaking news things in there. If you want to be included, like if you really, really, really want to be included into uh, one of those CSU news videos, my advice would be put some effort in writing a good st story like there's a lot of good builders out there a lot of great habitat builders too but everyone can build something and then post I, I i am i include myself among that like build something that looks good and then just post something about look at this uh, our new habitat is being enjoyed or our, our animals are enjoying their new habitat look at this okay Great, but what's the story behind it? Uh, and that's why I really love like Achterdijk Zoo uh, and the Natur Help Centrum, Limburg, I think it's called. They are really putting in an effort to write a complete story. Like they are not rushing to get their 50% uh, in their zoo. They are really telling a story about how each of the animals came to be in the zoo. Uh, which is something I absolutely appreciate because a lot of us are kind of want to participate in events. They want to par or we want to participate participate in auctions in, in the store and stuff like that. And we need 50% of our species on the show for that. And then we kind of rush all of our stuff. But it shows uh, like Achterdijk Zoo and um, uh, Natur Help Centrum uh, Limburg really really show that putting a good story out there is is actually way better i'm enjoying that way more than what i what i'm seeing from i'd say 30 percent of other people <laughs> um but yeah that's that's basically how you have a bigger chance of making it into zsu news other than that some quick little habitats i built since last time i have this like this is supposed to be an old uh, an older building like 70s you can see the pa painted brick is something zoos wouldn't really do nowadays so 
I ha I built these for my birds that I got from the event, so my Crimson Rosella and the Zebra Finch, and they are gonna go in here. In fact, uh, the only reason why they aren't in here yet is because I don't, I haven't found a good like like model for them yet. Like we have the owl here, yeah. I want to have something similar in here for those birds. Other than that, I have my scimitar oryx habitat over here. I absolutely love making this, uh, especially with the foliage. I'm really enjoying like putting foliage down now because it's like what would fit in with the climate as well as the general look that I want for these guys. Um, these are all blueprints. Uh, this like little stable here this so I'm gonna put links in the description down below again uh, for every blueprint that I used for my new habitats but yeah I have a breeding pair uh, of them and I absolutely love these guys I, I hope I can get like a successful breeding program set up for these guys because right now I'm the only zoo with them and I want to have more people with these guys because <laughs> they are so so good looking um, then over here we have our uh, walkthrough monkey habitat, which has common uh, squirrel monkeys, and we actually got them from uh, Forge over at Cedar Lake Zoo. Uh, they're a bit weird right now, but yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so we got them from Forge, and in return we will eventually be giving him uh, offspring from our penguin. Um, I think the monkeys Forge gave us might have been a bit uh, brain broken because they do weird shit. <laughs> they might have superpowers actually, thinking about it, because they glitch through everything. But yeah, I really love how I was able to get this as a walkthrough, like right, <laughs> even just the seeing the monkey <laughs> walking across the path gives me great pleasure. But that's so cool, look at that. <laughs> but yeah, you're or the visitors are able to go through here and they have this little building yeah really it's the first time I use this bridge actually and I really quite like them um, yeah th this is going to be my little uh, tropical oh, my little tropical section so my kawadis that I got from the store will go in here as well talking about the store um, I actually didn't get my first choice my first choice was the pair David's deer but um, on my screen I was second in the entire order of people who put their requests in and on everyone else's screen I was fourth and in that brief period of time between second and fourth there was another person <laughs> who also wanted pair David's deers uh, actually it was uh, Achterdeek Zoo I think uh, I'm not certain I'm, I'm quickly checking that out to make uh, yeah after the zoo actually got them I'm really happy for them because their storytelling is amazing but yeah that means we I didn't get my first choice uh, and I don't even know why discord would do or be like that like display it a second for me but fourth for everyone else uh, but I think the staff have said they will change the system in the future and I uh, I I actually would really appreciate that because right now things like Discord glitches, internet failing, people just being asleep while the store gets open, it it really turns something that shouldn't be competitive into into something competitive. Um, like ZSU isn't meant to be competitive. It's not me versus someone else. Um, it's the entire focus is setting up a successful zoo and successful breeding programs and having fun trading with other people and stuff like that but yeah like auctions stores events sometimes feel like we're supposed to be winning something or we, we're supposed to be competing against each other which really it shouldn't be and um and then people automatically start complaining about things that happen because for example, a lot of people didn't have 50% of their species uh, out yet, or there were glitches with the bot, which meant they didn't have them out yet. And then people are going to start complaining, naturally, because of the timed aspects. 
uh, added to it. And then um, add to that that moderators or staff members could type in the chat even though it was locked, which means they could put in their requests uh, and then just press enter when it, the clock hit 8 o'clock, while all the other people still had to press the button to get into the chat, um, like the actual typing bar I mean, then press Control V to get their request in there and then press enter. Uh, if something is down to a matter of milliseconds it can really make a difference, but I'm not one to complain, like sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, uh, but I'm happy that they are going to change it uh, to a better system. Also, I, m all my stuff get, staff get stuck on this little piece of path and I don't know why. It's so weird, like I'm, a, I'm not going to bother with that. But anyways, uh, I, I built this little aquarium here as you can see, uh, like, let me actually show you the exterior. So this is a building that is actually in real life there on this location it's not an aquarium obviously uh, still have to do the front and stuff to make it prettier but the interior I am preparing this for a whole bunch of fish that may come in in the near future and I actually already finished um, my piranha aquarium here I really like to use uh, Nick's exhibit prop mod for this it's perfect for something like this course combined with my rock walls from the Europe uh, European midnight pack but over here we have we're gonna have like a section of exotic fish and then once you go through this door this will be like the fish you could find in Belgium like the North Sea and all of our rivers and stuff so yeah that's gonna be fun then over here oh yeah this is something else like quite major um, you might remember I had a path going all the way like in a circle around here. I removed that and instead opted for just this little, like I said I was going to do a bird observation thingy, um, but yeah I just made it like this without the path going any further because I want to have this entire peninsula for wild bird breeding like it actually is in real life and I really love this this view and I hope this will work to get people out here because well, my zoo is closed right now, but I will eventually want to open it. But yeah, you can you can see the entire lake from here, or almost the entire lake from here. And of course, our little children's zoo all the way over there, which is my next major change that I did. Of course, my fucking animals are starving because Planet Zoo decides to be buggy since the update. But over here, I decided to make another entrance. Uh, I already made this parking lot, but... Um, I added in this blueprint, um, again link is gonna be in the description. So like families with young children may want to go through this entrance first because the children's zoo is here and I have this little stroller park here. Um, my Indian peafowl are roaming around here and it, that was perfect, that one running into this aviary uh, at the perfect time. Um, this is like imagine if they're free roaming. And a red fox gets in here somehow. Yeah, that's why I have this. So they are safe from wild predators. Over here we have our um, wallabies. Our red-necked wallabies. Uh, for those who might not know. That's the same species as the Bennett's wallaby. I know there was some confusion about this the other day. But yeah. Red-necked wallabies and Bennett's wallabies are the same species. <laughs> um... Yeah, I have four of these guys in here, I think, and I really love this habitat. They are kind of floating, apparently, but might be because of the grass. And I really love the foliage. Uh, I might have already said that, but the foliage in here is just, I think these are um, some type of apple trees. I think they're mangrove apple trees. Yeah, mangrove apple. I absolutely love this view, like if you're walking here and then you hear the peafowl uh, noises and then you walk through here and you see these beautiful beautiful animals um, I just really like this in the little shed they have yeah this is gonna get so many children to our zoo <laughs> I guess well maybe not maybe this will 
the, the playground. It's really a simple playground, but uh, this is actually the same one I used in Enter of Zoo, and I didn't know this, but this was actually made by Lukoshi, which is another major member of the Zoo Sims United um, community. So there you go. Uh, I also made this little sandbox using, uh, again, uh, Nick's prop mod, uh, or exhibit prop mod, uh, terrarium grounds, or terrarium floor, yeah. With uh, some East Asia buckets and stuff like that, yeah. And our little farmhouse here, which I absolutely love. It's actually quite similar to a house uh, near where this is based on. And I really like how it turned out uh, with the ivy and stuff. Yeah. All of my animals have this weird bug. Well, the peacock, not that, apparently, but where they don't move at all. <laughs> I hope Frontier fixes this, but yeah. That's our little um, children's zoo. Not much at the moment, but it's getting there. In terms of general expansion of the zoo, it's gonna be quite a big one if you like imagine it going around the entire uh, lake here. So I have my children's zoo here, my European forest over here, my aquatic section and my birds, and this is going to be like more plains open area, which might in the future become an African savanna section. But at the moment we only have scimitar oryx there. Uh, of course our aquarium, and then over here we'll have our tropical section. Um, which currently only has the common squirrel monkeys, but as I said the kawadis are going to go here as well. That being said, I hope you liked this episode and I hope um, you, you guys tune in for uh, next ZSU news, which will drop on Friday. Um, in, in other news, my Antwerp Zoo recreation is still ongoing, so if you haven't checked that out yet, uh, be sure to do so if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, I, th I don't think I mentioned it in my Antwerp Zoo video. Uh, I kind of forgot about that, but I am doing the Malaysian Tapir uh, or Malayan Tapir habitat next, so there's that. So, this has been it for this episode, and I'll see you next time. Bye!